love for oneself. So, we have to understand ourselves. And which one that you said you want to understand yourself? Was there Mary Lou? Great. So, we have to understand ourselves in order to love ourselves. And we have to understand what we need. And we'll talk a little bit more about needs a little later. But what do you need this week or this month? Does anybody want to share something? Relationship specific. What do you need? I'll give an example. I need more time together with my wife. We've been really busy, you know, with a young one and work and whatnot. So that's what I feel like I need. What do you need? Someone to love you. Someone to love you. Good. There's a difference between what I need and what I want. Yeah, that's desire. So we're, we're just focusing on what do you need. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. Love for my kids. Love from your kids or for your kids? From my kids. Love from your kids. Good. I guess that's what I desire. Yeah. I mean, I've got it, but it's... Yeah. So let's look at... Love in relationships. So if love from your kids was the desire, what do you think the need is behind that? That's how it shows up. To be loved. To be loved. Okay. Yeah. And perhaps appreciated. Could be. Yeah. To be loved. We have a core need to be loved. Babies after World War II that weren't handled, like people that didn't put hands on them, died. It's in our DNA. We need to be loved. If, if nobody loves us and we don't love ourselves, that's called death. And some people, you know, take passive suicide, some do active suicide based on this feeling of not being loved. So it's a very real need. And guess what? We'll get it met. We do get it met. Um, we use all kinds of vehicles. Some people use drama. Some people use conflict. Some people use drugs. Some people join gangs. There's lots of ways to, to get love and connection. So we also have to understand what we desire. What do we want? You know, when uh, before I met Charlene, the thing I wanted most, and I was very clear about it, is that soulful connection. You know, I'd had lots of different things in a relationship but it didn't have that to the intensity and the depth and the um, kind of equal partner to bring it forth in some, somebody until I met Charlene. So we have to know what we desire. And we're the, we're the ones that are actively meeting our own needs and fulfilling our own desires. If there's something that you desire, maybe it's quiet time, maybe it's you know an art class, maybe it's, I don't know what it might be, but if there's something you desire, and you have the opportunity to take action on it. You also have the opportunity to ignore it and feel this disconnection with who? Yourself. So a person that's disconnected with themselves is going to be how effective in relationship or in finding somebody. That's how important this is. The next area is are you doing the things that serve you? Or are you doing things that work against yourself? You know, I, I've had very stressful work at times and it has worked against myself in relationships. And I've also had very fulfilling work at times, and that has supported my relationship. So the things that we do, we can look at, is it really serving us? The things we say yes to, 
you know, we got invited to a uh, concert tomorrow night. And both of us looked at it, and it was like a famous guy, Harry Connick Jr., kind of fun. We also looked at the fact that we haven't had enough time together, and we have a boy that is, you know, we're not going to be with all afternoon because of this workshop, and started looking at all the math, and it's like, no, we said no to it. Free tickets, by the way. So, you know, choosing what serves us. I have no idea what I wrote here, or why I wrote this. <laughs> so, um, oh, I know why I wrote it. If we are not feeling ourselves, we will go to, we will approach relationship from a place of scarcity. If we are feeling ourselves with appreciation, with nurturing activities, with connection, whether that's journaling or a hike in nature or a swim in the ocean or you know chatting with your best friend, if we're nurturing ourselves with the things that fill us up, we will not be scarce in relationship. So divinity is both imminent and transcendent. In other words, within and all around us. So that connection with the divine within us. In fact, if you can, take at least one hand, I know you got papers, and place it on your heart. And close your eyes. And just feel this radiant energy, this aliveness within your chest. The core you divine spark, the gift of life, the fullness that exists without you doing anything. And as that radiates forth, you can open your eyes now, when we connect with that divine energy, we start recognizing it in others. It's in you. It's in you. It's in you. It's in you. And Robert, it's in you. And Charlie, it's in you. And it's in me. It's in every one of us. And that, that connection and relationship is pure connection. So, if if one is not in relationship, just connecting with that divinity within and start recognizing it more deeply with everyone you meet is enough to bring new connections. So I want you just to write a few areas, a few qualities that are lovable about you. You know, in, this isn't this isn't bragging. It's just recognizing your own uniqueness, what you've been through, who you've become, what you've overcome. What's beautiful about you? What do you respect? What have other people told you that you keep hearing that's unique about you? Mary Lou, do you need paper? We have a pen and paper. I can't see. Okay. story. Why don't you write a couple 
multiple lines about the hero in your life story. You. That your own hero. Nobody's had a perfect life, humanly speaking. So what do you cherish about your life story? Specifically in relationship, include at least one thing about what's amazing about you in relationship. Maybe the other person that you were with didn't appreciate it, but you still know, in relationship, I give this. In relationship, I'm an amazing partner because... So now it's time for action. You know more about the importance of really cherishing and, and appreciating and loving yourself and choosing things that serve you. So what are you going to do differently to make the relationship you're in or want to be in or the next time you're in one, to make it better? What are you going to do differently for you, the way you treat yourself? So I want you to come up with, you know, at least three different action steps that you can do differently. It might be journaling once a week. It might be, you know, eating your favorite foods once a week or every day. You know, there's something that you know would be an example of taking better care of yourself and filling yourself with what really nurtures you. The last thing we're going to do on this section is just close our eyes and, and feel this love for yourself and how you're committing to take better care of yourself, to actively show love for yourself, to fill yourself. Fill your soul with what you most need. 